Okay, welcome to part one of Collisions in One Dimension. Part two will come in a couple of videos time once we've done another little bit of theory in the next video. Um, so Collisions in One Dimension is something on the Mechanics Minor course. Essentially, it's using the conservation of momentum. And uh, for the Mechanics Minor course, all collisions, all collision questions, they will all occur in, on a single line. Okay, this is why it's a collisions in one dimension. Um, so we've got perhaps two objects coming together um, and they bounce off each other, or maybe they, they come together and they move off in the same direction or uh, the other way, perhaps. Um, or maybe they're moving in the same direction with one traveling faster than they kind of bounce or something, something like this. We've got we've got some kind of uh, motion between two particles um, and, and then they collide. OK, um, now, because both of these particles are freely moving, then the conservation of momentum applies to this system. That is the momentum before the collision of the system must equal the momentum after the collision. Um, so one dimension collisions, as I've already mentioned, are um, mechanics minor. If you're going to do mechanics major, which I don't have any video plans for uh, this anytime soon, but you might have situations like this. Um, where uh, collisions don't occur in a single line of motion, and these are collisions in two dimensions. Um, they're, they're not studied on this course. Okay, so, uh, um, this is mechanics minor, collisions in one dimension. Okay, so how we're going to set this up is um, for all of these types of questions, the, the diagram I'll draw will look something like this. Uh, I've got two particles. Um, the particle of this one is going to be mass one, and the mass of this one is going to be mass two. Um, and then across the top, I will put arrows for the initial velocity, and then across the bottom, I'll put arrows for the final velocity. So this is the velocities before the impact. Uh, so let's call it u1 and u2. And then these are the velocities after the impact. So let's call it v1 and v2. Um, so this is the velocity of the left-hand mass before the impact, and this is the velocity of the left-hand mass after the impact. And likewise, these two values are those for mass two. OK, um, so conservation of momentum applies because both particles move freely. OK, there's not a wall or a floor or anything that doesn't move. Um, there's, no, there's no kind of bouncing off the floor or anything like that. My conservation of momentum doesn't apply. And uh, this uh, will apply because both particles can move freely. So conservation of momentum says that U1 M1 plus U2 M2 must equal V1 M1 plus V2 M2. OK, so U1 M1, that is the momentum of the left hand particle before the impact. And U2 M2 is the momentum of the right hand particle before the impact. And by the conservation of momentum, that must equal the momentum after the impact of the system, which is the momentum of the left hand particle plus the momentum of the right-hand particle. Okay, so it gives us this equation, uh, which is what we're going to be working with um, in, in today's video. A couple other things to note. Um, I'm going to put all of my arrows in the same direction. I usually draw them from left to right. And if a particle is moving from right to left, then the value is negative. Okay, these are velocities, um, so they can be negative. Um, it is one dimension, so they're not vectors um, per se but uh, they, they, uh, they can move either left or right. So um, rather than change the direction of the arrows, I will change the signs of the numbers. OK, so all of my diagrams will be positive from left to right. OK, you could put that just to remind you, but I think these four arrows kind of remind you which direction is positive anyway. Um, another thing to note is if these are going to collide, then this velocity must be bigger than this one, or greater than, I should say. Um, otherwise, it's never going to catch up with it. So U1 has to be greater than U2. Um, otherwise, it's never going to hit. And that's important when drawing sketches and diagrams and just to make sure we get the two particles in the correct order. And um, likewise, uh, V2 must be greater than V1. Otherwise, the particles must have transitioned and gone through each other, uh, which is another issue. Um, you can't have that. All right, they, they definitely, um, not like, they collide, they can move in either direction, but they, they can't go through each other, they can't cross each other, that's not that's not allowed. Um, so uh, this one has to be bigger than this one um, for, for that to be true. Um, so those two are kind of important um, inequalities. I suppose it could be equal to, they could move off with the same velocity, so they could coalesce, they could kind of join together and move off with the same velocity. Um, 
but this one does have to be strictly greater than. Um, I say that, actually, it can be equal to if you have uh, uh, an object which starts together and then they kind of blow apart. And I've seen firework questions like that, so maybe I should put equal to there as well, um, just in case it is kind of two objects joined and then they split off. Um, so, yeah, OK, I guess that is possible. OK, but either way, um, U1 cannot be less than U2 and V1 cannot be greater than V2. All right. Um, Right, brilliant. Let's crack on with three examples then. Let's have a look at some questions. Uh, so example number one, we've got particles A and B. They have equal mass and they are travelling along the same line of motion with speeds 12 metres per second and 5 metres per second respectively. Uh, they're travelling in the same direction and the particles collide. Find the speed of particle A after the collision, given that the speed of particle B after the collision is 9 metres per second for part A or 12 metres per second for part B. Okay, so the first things first, most mechanics questions, just draw a diagram. So I'm just going to pop in my two particles. Okay, there's my uh, one particle and there's my other particle. Um, it's going to have some initial velocities to the right, and then it's going to have some final velocities to the right as well. I'm just going to pop underneath. Um, one of them is travelling at 12 metres per second, and one is 5 metres per second, and they're travelling in the same direction, so they're both going to be positive numbers. Uh, this one would have to be the 12, and this one has to be the 5, otherwise this would never catch up with that. Okay, So if this was 5 and this was 12, um, they, there wouldn't be a collision. So this has to be 12, this has to be 5. Uh, 12 was particle A, so I'm just going to pop an A over here to remind me that's A, and then 5 is particle B, so I'm just going to pop a B over here. Um, they're equal mass, so I'm just going to pop an M in there. Um, the masses themselves aren't actually uh, the important bit, it's the relative masses. Um, so uh, we'll find out in a minute that, that, that the M's will cancel. Okay, so it's, uh, it's the relative masses that are, that are the information we need, uh, not the actual numerical values. Okay, and we are required to find the speed of particle A after the collision, given that the speed of particle B is uh, these two. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to label it VA, which is what I'm asked to find, and VB, uh, which is going to take two different values. Okay, so conservation of momentum, so I'm going to pop that down as COM, just to first of all remind myself what I am attempting to do here. Um, if I ever need to look back at my working, but also uh, in an exam setting, just it, it tells the examiner or the marker um, exactly what I'm attempting to do. Okay. Uh, so the momentum before, that's going to be the mass times the velocity, which is 12m of that particle, particle A, uh, plus the mass times the velocity of particle B. Uh, that's going to equal the mass times the velocity of particle A after the collision, which is VAM, uh, and plus VBM. So that's the conservation of momentum formula. Um, so I've got two different values for VB, and I'm asked to calculate what um, the speed of A is after the collision. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make VA the subject. Now, as promised, the M's will cancel. We can see they've all got a coefficient of M there. They're all going to disappear. It's obviously a non-zero value. Otherwise, um, it would be zero mass, which isn't possible in these questions. Um, so if I rearrange this, I will get that VA is going to be equal to 17 minus VB. Okay, so there's VA in terms of VB. And now the only thing left to do is to plug in the two values. So uh, VB is 9, part A. If VB is 9, that tells me that VA is 17 minus 9, which is 8. And for part B, um, VB is 12. So that tells me that VA must be 5. Those are my two answers. Okay. Um, just to make sure they, they do make sense, uh, VB is 9, VA is 8. That's good. It's moving faster, this one and this one. So they've not gone through each other. And uh, VB is 12, VA is 5. So again, that's, that's fine. Um, brilliant. So those are the two answers to that question. All right, example number two. A particle of mass 20 kilograms is travelling at 3 metres per second in a straight line. Particle B of mass 5 kilograms, travelling in the same direction as A, 
with a speed of 15 meters per second collides with A along the common line of motion. Okay, so this, this phrase is just there just to, just to tell you that it's a one dimensional collision. Uh, you won't see anything different um, in mechanics minor. But I find the speed and direction of particle B after the collision, given that A has uh, these two speeds, so six and seven, and uh, find the velocity of A after the collision such that particle B stops dead. All right, so again, first things first, I'm just going to draw my diagram. So I've got um, two particles. Here we go. Um, particle A has got a mass of 20 kilograms, it's travelling at three. And particle B has, a, B has a mass of five kilograms, travelling in the same direction. So they're both going to be positive, travelling at 15. So the 15 has to go at the back and the three has to go at the front. This is why I didn't just rush in and put three on the left-hand one, um, because that wouldn't catch up. Uh, so A is on my right and B is on my left. So just, just be careful when drawing the diagram. Uh, you've got to make sure it all makes sense. Um, right, particle B is mass five, particle A is mass 20. So 20 pops in there, five pops in there, and uh, there's going to be a collision. And then we're going to have a velocity of B and a velocity of A after the collision. Okay, so there's my diagram, set up my equation, so conservation of momentum, okay, that tells, again, tells the examiner what I'm attempting to do. So 15 times 5 is 75, 3 times 20 is 60, that must equal 5VB plus 20VA. So there's my uh, conservation of momentum equation. Um, I've got two VA speeds, six and seven, and I'm asked to calculate VB. So this time I'm going to make VB the subject of this. So VB is going to equal, that's 135. Let's divide that by five, so that's going to be 27. And divide that by five is four, and then subtract that across. So I've got minus four VA. So there's my VB in terms of VA. And now similar to example number one, I pop in these two values. Uh, so for part A, uh, we've got six meters per second. Um, so if VA is six, then I've got 27 minus 24. Um, so VB uh, would equal three uh, meters per second. And V for part B, VB, right, for part B it was seven. Uh, so I'm going to get 27 minus 4 times 7, so that's 27 minus 28, uh, so that's negative 1 uh, metres per second. Um, OK, so just check the wording of the question. Find the speed and direction. OK, so these are currently velocities. Um, so you must make sure that your answers uh, reflect the question. So for part A, my answer will actually be uh, 3 metres per second um, in the original direction of motion and then for part b the speed of that is one meters per second and that is in the opposite direction of motion and that's fine because we're only dealing with a one-dimensional uh, situation um, so you don't need any angles or anything like that. It doesn't make sense. So it's just left or right. Um, I mean, you can state left or right uh, relative to your diagram, but it is better to um, kind of uh, make it less subjective to your diagram and just put original and opposite. Um, OK, and then part two. Uh, find the velocity of A after the collision such that particle B stops dead. OK, so at what, um, what speed does this move off with if this one's going to hit and then stop? So we could have... Um, a situation where the, this one catches up with it, it just then stops dead and that one carries on. Uh, what speed is this particle? Um, uh, what does it have um, after that collision? OK, so for part two, particle B stopped dead. That essentially means VB equals zero. So again, go back to this relationship between VA and VB. This still holds. Uh, set VB to be zero. Um, this implies that 27 equals 4VA, divided by the size by 4, I get VA is 6.75 uh, metres per second. OK, and that actually makes sense if you think about it, because when it was 6 metres per second, it travelled at 3. When it was 7 metres per second, it travelled at 1 in the other direction. And 0 is 3 quarters of the way between 3 and minus 1. And 6.75 is 3 quarters of the way between 6 and 7. That is not a coincidence. Okay. 
All right. Um, example number three. So third and final example then uh, to back up this video with. All right. Two particles P and Q. This time they are moving towards each other uh, with speeds of five and ten meters per second, respectively. Uh, they directly collide along the lines of motion. Uh, particle P has a mass of 15 kilograms. Particle Q has a mass of nine kilograms. Um, after the collision, particles P and Q have the same speed, but they're moving in opposite directions. Calculate the speed of the particles. All right, then. So again, diagram. Notice that all three of these examples straight away I've jumped in with a diagram. Um, uh, they're moving towards each other this time, so it doesn't actually matter which you put uh, which side. I'm going to put P on the left and Q on the right. Uh, P has a mass of 15, Q has a mass of 9. Um, the velocities, well, the velocity of P um, is 5. They're moving towards each other, so that is moving to the right, so that's positive 5. Um, Q has a speed of 10, but if we're moving towards each other, it's moving to the left. Um, my arrow is obviously pointing to the right, so the value there is actually negative 10. Okay, because that is the velocity, the initial velocity of particle Q. All right, after the collision, P and Q have the same speed, but they're moving in opposite directions. Uh, so there's two options for that on the surface of it. Uh, we've got P moving to the right and Q moving to the left. The problem with that is if that's true, then they must have crossed each other uh, for that to happen, which is not possible. Um, so actually, that leaves one option, which is P is moving to the left and Q is moving to the right. Um, so this one is going to be a negative value. So I'm just going to pop that as negative V, just to emphasize it's moving to the left. I'm expecting V to be a positive number and the same speed, but to the right, so therefore positive V. OK, so there's my setup uh, for this situation. And again, I'm just going to apply the conservation of momentum. And I'm just going to tell the examiner that that is indeed what I'm attempting to do by putting com to the left. Um, and then momentum before equals momentum afterwards. So momentum before. We're going to have 5 times 15, which is 75, uh, plus 9 times minus 10, which is negative 90. Uh, yes, that's a negative number, but momentum is a vector, so it's not a problem. Um, that's going to equal minus 15v plus 9v. Okay, so there's my equation. So that's momentum before 75 minus 90 equal to momentum after, which is minus 15v plus 9v. And this is now just an equation with V in it. Uh, 75 minus 90 is minus 15. Minus 15 plus 9 is minus 6. Divide both sides by minus 6. I get V as positive 2.5. And I expected a positive answer here. Um, because I can't have P moving to the right and V moving to the left. That doesn't make sense. Because um, they can't go through each other. Um, so therefore... Um, I need V to be positive for this one to be moving to the left and this one to be moving to the right. Um, calculate the speed of the particles. Well, that is the speed of the particles. Uh, so that answers the question. Brilliant. Right. Next video, we're looking at Newton's law of impact uh, and the coefficient of restitution. And then we're going to apply that theory in conjunction with what we've just done in this video in um, the video after next. Uh, thank you very much for, for watching and check out other videos uh, if you need to.